Hi there. This is Ryan Malloy here at the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, we're going to discuss continuity rules of calculus. Now, a rigorous, mathematically precise definition of continuity is very involved and very technical. And it's something that is typically not discussed in full until a real analysis course at the college level. But what we can do in this video is discuss different types of discontinuities that appear in single variable calculus. So here we have two functions, a red function and a blue function, which both feature an infinite discontinuity at x equals 1. So in the case of our red curve, as we approach x equals 1 from the left, the function goes up towards positive infinity. As we approach x equals 1 from the right, the function goes down to negative infinity. And similarly, for our blue curve, as we approach x equals 1 from either direction, the function goes towards positive infinity. So what can cause this sort of discontinuity? It frequently takes place when there is a function of x in the denominator of a function. For example, for something like this, we might have f of x equals, let's say, negative 1 over x minus 1. So we see as x approaches 1, the denominator approaches 0. And anytime we have 1 over 0, or in this case, negative 1 over 0, our function will approach one of the two infinities and become undefined at x equals 0. Okay. So the next type of discontinuity is sometimes referred to as a jump discontinuity. So here we have one function, looks like it might be perhaps an exponential function, up until the point x equals 1. And then once we hit that point, our function has a new definition, which looks like it may be a linear function. So essentially, there are two different functions of x taking place on different parts of the domain. From negative infinity up until 1, non-inclusive, we're using our exponential function. And from 1, inclusive, to positive infinity, we're using our linear definition. Now, this is typically indicated with this sort of notation, the bracket to indicate that our, uh, that our function is piecewise. So it might be something like e to the x for x less than 1. And then we'll say something like 1 third x for x greater than or equal to 1. Great. So the third and final form of discontinuity has a couple of different names, sometimes called a whole or a removable discontinuity. So here we have some curve. And then at the point, let's say, x equals 3, there is simply a hole where the function is not defined. Now, sometimes this can be constructed arbitrarily by just saying, all right, this function is defined as f of x equals some function of x for all of the domain except at x equals 3. And it's simply not defined there. Other times, this can occur when we have f of x equals something in the numerator. Let's just say x to the fifth. But then we have a factor in the numerator and the denominator. So here we have x minus 3 in the numerator and x minus 3 in the denominator. When you plug in x equals 3, you get an indeterminate form of 0 over 0, and the function is undefined. But for all other values of x, the function is identical to x equals 5 or to x to the fifth power, rather. So we have holes, aka removable discontinuities, jump discontinuities from piecewise functions, 
and infinite discontinuities. My name is Ryan Malloy, and we've just discussed discontinuity rules for calculus.